12 months of photography, YouTube, expressing, sharing. Let's talk about it all right now. All right, so I know that end of year review videos are like dime a dozen, there are a lot of them, but I do see the value in publicly reflecting on the year that was. Because number one, it is your journey. Number two, nostalgia, like self-reflection, looking back for inspiration from your own work. This all happens in a year end review video. And hopefully along the way you inspire somebody, some people, a lot of people to make some changes in their life, inspire them, motivate them to do what you did just by being yourself and expressing yourself. All right, so 2022 was about a couple of things. Number one for me, that was experimentation. Be it film, digital, editing, printing my work. I always have this fight of being consistent and the way to be consistent is to repeat, rinse and repeat, which is very true. But what is also true is you have to be curious within that and experiment and expand and question and doubt and wonder. And that's all under the tree of experimentation. I really have to remind myself to be curious, which sounds so strange when I say it back out loud, but it really is that. Like if I'm trying a film stock, there, I was curious, so that's why I'm trying it. But then if I like it, I stop. But what you're supposed to do, I believe, is try a multiple film stocks and then come to a conclusion based on trying different things or being curious. And I have to say that YouTube also helps with that a lot. With every video, you're trying to do something different and that means you have to be curious to find out new topics, to find out new things to talk about on your channel. So to me, that's why experimentation was one of the biggest lessons or one of the biggest focuses I had in 2022. As for the second thing that stood out for me in 2022, it would have to be the photo books that I picked up of the greats in street photography. Now, as I dug a little deeper into the street photography greats, I found that they had a few things in common. One, they were either very old or they had passed. And so that was interesting to me. Maybe some of them did get their notoriety or their flowers, so to speak, while they were alive, but a lot of them after they passed, people really started to like their work. So that led me to believe that it was about process for them. I'm sure they get, got some rewards as they were in their prime, but it was actually about the process of creating images, the process of creating the body of work that we now look at. So if it was about process, I said to myself, you gotta slow down. You gotta really understand why you're shooting. And that might take a lifetime. Those are the examples. Slow it down. It doesn't mean you're not trying to make this as a living. It means slow down mentally. It is about the process. We can hold on to that. All the greats have that in common. Maybe people will notice, maybe they won't. That can't be the goal. The goal has to be the process. All right, so enough with the philosophical side of photography and what might be and what might not be. And let's just talk about some fun categories to sum up 2022. Favorite film stock of 2022, favorite camera, favorite photo book, and surprise find of 2022. And last category was habits that bred success for me in 2022. So let's go through them all right now. Okay, so first category, favorite photo book of 2022. And for me, that was a no brainer, Saul Lighter, Early Color. Now it came out in 2006, the first edition, but I only learned about Sal Leiter in 2017 or 2016. <laughs> I couldn't get my hands on the book, it was impossible, but a dear friend of mine uh, gifted me a copy of Early Color. And let me tell you, this as a photo book, right? So just images and few words, there was so much inspiration, a word that we throw around a lot. But when you start to understand his work and then listen to some interviews, the connection of understanding what I'm trying to express with the world is exactly what he was already doing. And it was this idea of just shooting what you like and letting the chips fall where they may. Now, that sounds whimsical, like you can't make a career or a life about it, but 
that's exactly what he did. Now, it's way deeper than that, but this is a connection with a stranger that I had immediately just by looking at his work. Saw lighter, early color. Okay, so next category, favorite film stock of 2022. Kentmere Pan 100, for a couple of reasons, is my favorite film stock of 2022. Now, this was a last minute decision because I thought for sure it would be Kodak Gold 200 because I had my best results with it. It was very consistent. You want a consistency, especially if you're doing projects. So Ilford makes Ilford 400. There's so many film stocks that they make, but that's the high-end premium pro version of the Kentmere uh, 100, the Kentmere 400. So that makes it a budget film. And in a recession, I'm like, okay, a recession plus digital tools tell me that if I shoot this film stock, if I need to make any adjustments to make it come to life or make it more contrasty or crunchy, I can put that in Lightroom and work on it in post. But out of the camera, for this price, this film, Kentmere Pan 100, really impressed me. So that was my favorite film of 2022. The next category, favorite camera of 2022. This is a no brainer, my Ricoh GR2 because it's reliable, I understand the settings, and they consistently gave me the same results. And I love that about the GR2. With that said, 2023, for sure I'm upgrading. Doesn't mean I'm gonna ever sell the Ricoh GR2, but it really did come through for me time and time again. And this is shooting my favorite two effects, high contrast black and white, and number two, positive film. So you might be asking, how can your favorite camera be a camera that you've been using since say 2017? I think it's pretty simple. The camera I actually used on a daily basis for most of my projects was my Ricoh GR2 and it just continued to come through as a compact powerhouse and it gave me the confidence to share projects, share moments with all of you guys knowing that this camera will always perform the way I want it. So surprise find of 2022, the Ektar H35 half frame camera. Now it's basically a reusable point and shoot camera, film, manual, F9, locked in, but because it's a half frame, you get double the exposure. So 72 frames instead of 36. So for me, that was a big deal. And I was late to it because I had dismissed it like, oh, half frame, I'm gonna lose quality. But what I gained from this camera was creativity. I was inspired immediately by having more frames to express myself with. And I think to me, everybody who does film or shoots film or just likes to casually shoot some stuff with their family, this is a camera you gotta pick up. I made a couple of videos on it and it was only 50 bucks. And finally, habits that bred the most success for me in 2022. Okay, so these three habits really helped me on a day-to-day -day basis, and those were consistency, discipline, and making mistakes while falling forward. So maybe you've heard of all these things, I'm assuming you have at this point, but I really tried to understand consistency on a day-to-day -day basis. What does that look like? Well, trying to do the same thing that you did yesterday, even when obstacles come. Number two, discipline. It ties into consistency. If you're disciplined, then you're going to find a way to be consistent. And number three, making mistakes while falling forward. So understanding that you might make mistakes and that's okay, and you just keep it moving even if you make those mistakes. You don't have to sweat the small stuff. The bigger picture is, let me finish what I started. Okay, so that brings us to the question of the day or of 2022, and that's what is one thing that you improved on in photography or in life in the last 12 months? One thing that you improved on. Give yourself a pat on the shoulder and share it in the comments below. Okay, so 2022 is a wrap. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning into my channel. It's growing because of you guys. I'm learning because of y'all. Know more about film stocks cameras, angles, inspiration, all because of you. So thank you for that, I appreciate it. In 2023, I'm gonna slow things down with the process of the work. I'm not gonna slow down working. I enjoy photography, I enjoy learning, but I'll be a little bit more vulnerable, share more about my life as a dad, working um, in the world of photography, creating, expression, all these things. Let's talk about those things, but at the end of the day, do what you love, share what you feel, not what you're told to share, 
and let the chips fall where they may. Thank you again for always supporting. It really means a lot to me. And I hope to see you back in 2023, snapping away and sharing your ideas, your passions, and your interests. All right? Until the next video, stay creative and believe in yourself. Peace.